the revolution is upon us. This is Get It On Vinyl. Uh, my name is Eve Monse. I'm one of the owners here at Anton's Record Shop. Uh, we opened in 1987, and it, Ant Anton's was opened by Clifford Anton, who started Anton's Nightclub back in 1975, and it's still going strong today. So the, uh, the Anton's family is uh, alive and well here in Austin, Texas. So Austin, um, kind of known as a live music city, also a great place to shop for records. Um, there's an Austin record convention uh, annually that's, I think it's supposed to be one of the largest, if not the largest in the country. So we see dealers, record dealers come in for that every year. Um, and then just all the shops in town. I mean, it seems like maybe five or so years ago, uh, we started noticing people coming in on the weekends from cities outside of Austin just to come to all the shops because there's there's multiple shops in town and we get a wide variety of, of people shopping for records. Um, I started working here back in 2001 and it was mostly older collectors buying records and people who were younger were buying CDs and now that's kind of flip-flopped. We still of course have our our collectors, serious collectors, but we have a lot more uh, we see a lot more casual music buyers, students, we're, because we're just north of the UT campus. We get a lot of students who come through. And just, you know, in general, it's, you know, younger, younger folks buying records now, you know. When you buy music online, it's, it's nice, I guess, to get the little, you may also like this uh, message at the bottom, but once you're in a record store, you can actually talk to someone who maybe likes the same band as you and can, can put something in your hand, you know, and, and it's, it's a community for sure. And, um, you know, we, we've, we've gotten into a world where everything is, is digital and it's, you know, everybody expects to get this instant gratification for everything. And there's something really gratifying about going into a record store and digging through the bins and trying to discover something new that, you know, you can put your hands on. So there's, you know, definitely the community aspect and then just, you know, the, the fun of, of going out and, and looking for something. Uh, when I was in high school, I, I started playing at the Anton's Nightclub. I'm a musician, so um, I I would come here to look for records, and it, you know it's a special place to me. This was the kind of the store that I, I grew up shopping in, and um, would ask people here for suggestions. So a lot of the first influential records that that I purchased came came from the store, and I used to just hang out here. And one day I I heard people talk the the employees at the time talking about oh we might need to get another another person in here. I was like, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. Um, so I started out working one day a week. I was here from noon to five on Sundays for, for a long time um, and gradually became more and more involved in the store. And um, after Clifford Anton passed in 2006, uh, the employees were able to come together to, to purchase the store to keep it going. And I mean, it's, it's a very important place to me. I mean, both, both the Anton's Nightclub and the Anton's Record Store, um, I mean, I feel like I've learned a majority of what I know about music just from being inside the walls, you know. When the owners um, had the opportunity to, to purchase the store to keep it going, I mean, that was kind of first and foremost in our mind was what would Clifford want, you know, how do we preserve it? And then, of course, you know, how do you make it relevant for today? So, you know, we've, we've kept it pretty much the way it was um, when, when Clifford owned it. Um, and he was, you know, he would make sure that we had certain things in stock all the time. You know, if we were out of Bobby Bland, Two Steps from the Blues, he was unhappy. Um, but, but otherwise, you know, it, it, we kind of ran it prior, uh, you know, we, we worked with him, I guess, on, on ideas and, and um, there was a lot of leeway to, to run things before. But, um, you know, after, after he passed, it was, we were very conscious of, you know, making sure that the things that were important to him stayed important to us. And then anything we could do to kind of help, you know, keep the store uh, successful after his passing, you know, we've, we've tried to do that, but without straying from the original purpose that the store was open. So when I first started working here, it was all about CDs. I mean, people were buying CDs. We'd sell records, but it was the focus and the way people consume music was, was CD. And when downloads started becoming prevalent, we were, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And that was when vinyl sales started going up, and it was really cool to watch as CD sales go down, went down, vinyl sales were on the rise. And I mean, that's that's why the the store is still here. You know, we're we're really fortunate that that vinyl has become such an important way that people choose to listen to music because we all know there's plenty of other options out there right now. So we we've kind of always been known as a store that has 
blues, local artists, things that are a little bit more niche oriented. Um, so a majority of, of what we sell, especially off our website, is going to be independent artists who don't have distribution or um, you know, a, a blues release that's very, very low key under the radar. Um, and we do definitely sell a lot of major label artists and new releases um, when they come out, but that tends to be more of the in-store purchase. You know, people who come in, oh, I need a copy of Fleetwood Mac Rumors or, you know, whatever, um, the new Jack White maybe, you know, things that, are, that have wider distribution. That tends to be stuff that people come in the store and purchase. Um, but folks who don't live here, maybe that don't have access to a record store in their town, when they're buying stuff from us off our website, it tends to be things that are harder to find elsewhere. So the very first record store day, I thought, oh, this is a cool idea. Maybe some people will come. And it was our busiest day of the year. And since that first record store day, every record store day has been our busiest day of the year. Um, it's pretty much like doing a week's worth of business in a single day. It's, it's great, you know? Um, and you get people who come in, some of them, you know, are, are very, they're looking for a very specific item that, that came out for record store day. They're here, they're in line early in the morning. And then as the day progresses, it's more people just getting out to go to their record store and see what's available, maybe what um, exclusives are still left, and then also just they just want to support the store. Um, so it's it's just been great for us. We we you know look forward to it every year. Um, you know people greet each other with Happy Record Store Day, which is cool. Um, and then also in Austin, what what's kind of special, and I think maybe some other places have started doing it as well, but we have. Um, this indie record crawl. So if you bring a receipt from one store who's participating to another store, you get a discount. And it just kind of brings the entire Austin record store community together, um, encouraging people to, to hit multiple stores that day. Not Don't just go to the one you're used to going to, maybe try a place you haven't been to before or that you've kind of forgotten about that you haven't been to in a while, that kind of thing. So I love the, the community aspect of it. I feel like you know the the vinyl sales have continued to increase, and you know who knows when that's going to either taper off or, or drop. But it's it's been going strong. Um, we're starting to see new pressing plants open up, which is a really good sign because for a while that kind of prevented um, stores from getting certain items because there was a such a backlog at the handful of pressing plants that were still open. So the fact that there's new technology for new pressing plants, I think, is is a really good sign. Um, and there's actually one that just opened in Austin, and I think a second one that's about to open. So even locally, you know, that, that means that more local bands are probably going to be uh, putting out vinyl. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. I feel like there's an investment um, in, in vinyl for the long run, you know. Sure. You know, I feel really lucky to, to be a part of this place. And every day, I, you know, try to think of ways to keep it exciting and interesting. And, um, you know, there's there's challenges all the time, and and it's a it's kind of a matter of just adapting to what what comes at you. So there's definitely excitement, and there's also you know some stress associated with with it. Um, but you know, it, I think just whatever happens in the future, we just we do our best to adapt to it. And it's it's almost like it's a clubhouse in a way. We see people come in um, that just want to hang out and talk about records, and I mean just. Being in a record store is a special thing in, in 2018, and um, I feel really fortunate to be a part of, of this store specifically, um, mainly because it was such an important part of my childhood growing up and, and becoming a musician. Um, so I think, you know, having uh, or being a part of, of an iconic record shop is, is a really special thing, and um, a lot of it's just, you know, the people who come through and, and hang out, you know, it's, it's definitely part of a community.